Today's podcast is brought to you by Eddy. Find better candidates, conduct more focused interviews, and make data-driven hiring decisions. Hire Eddy, hire faster, hire smarter, hire more. Learn more at eddy.com. Now, let's podcast. Welcome to Disrupt Salt Lake City. My name is Jared Olson, and I am joined today by Thane Som, a benefit consultant at Ventress, and Trevor Larson, the co-founder of Perk Now. How are you guys doing today? Doing, doing awesome. Good. Doing good. Cool. Excited to be here. Man, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, I'm really excited to kind of talk about uh, our discussion today. So, Really, the, the purpose of this podcast is to explore total rewards. I mean, this is such a common thing every HR professional has to deal with, but total rewards, uh, it's a big umbrella with a lot of moving parts, and, and you guys have a lot of experience within the benefit side and within the perk side of it. And so I really kind of want to find out what, from your perspective, is changing in the world of human resources as it relates to these different areas. And Um, And a personal thing that I really like to do is whenever I make a job offer to someone, I like to outline the total compensation package, right? Most people just care about their salary, but I want to talk about their salary. I want to talk what you're paying for their premiums, what perks are out there, what are the differentiators, and what's the total cost the employer is making to get an employee on board. And then as you have annual reviews and as you're talking to employees, continue to highlight what those total, the total compensation package is. Excuse me. Um, and, and so uh, I kind of want to talk about that from your guys' perspective because you got a, a different angle, I think, on this a little bit. Uh, and so first question I just want to pose to both of you is what are you seeing happen in Utah that relates to total rewards? Like are a lot of companies thinking in this mentality of total compensation package and differentiators? Or just from where you sit, what are you seeing happening within employee benefits and total rewards in in Utah? So something that I've kind of seen um, as I've talked to a bunch of HR people for like sales demos or networking is the cost of benefits has gone up quite a bit. And HR's budget seems to be the one that's, that's kind of limited or cut more than other budgets. And so they have this limited budget and they have to figure out how they can like maximize it and get the most out of it, both on like a value side for the employee, but also I think almost more importantly is like the perceived value of it. Um, and like you said, there's a ton of like moving parts when it comes to total comp. I think the biggest trend that I've seen, um, especially in like the last year has been like on-site services. Um, so you see companies like Jet Dental popping up who does on-site dental care, and they're in all the big companies. Yeah, we've previously podcasted with him. Have you? Yeah. Jordan, Jordan Smith? Yeah. Yeah, so he's a great guy. We're partnered with them at Perk now. They're basically everywhere. Just in the last year, they're everywhere. Qualtrics, Vivint, Podium, and just dozens and dozens of other companies. Um, You also have like Dapper and Dash, who does on-site barber and salon services. There's on-site chiropractors, massage therapists, wellness screenings. Um, We... Perk now actually started as a mobile car detailing company, like the furthest thing from HR tech. <laughs> and um, so there's on-site car detailing. So these are really like affordable ways for the company to help their employees be more productive, save time, and, and it has a lot of perceived value on top of, of the normal like benefits and comp. Okay, so you mentioned that benefits are getting really expensive, but all of these things you mentioned have you know some cost associated with it. Are 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 companies doing this because they're finding unique ways to bill, like Jet Dental billing through medical insurance, or or how from from what you're seeing are people able to afford this? So most of the on-site services are actually employee paid. Some companies will subsidize it to some extent. Um, but usually they'll offer some kind of like employee discount to be able to come on site um, and then employees pay out of pocket. <clears throat> but it's, it's like the sheer convenience that um, the employees receive from it and usually like a better rate than they'll get if they were to go do it on their own that makes it ha- have that kind of value. Okay. Drives that value to them. Okay, so Thane, why are we seeing so uh, constant increases in medical insurance? Like, th- this is a huge expense. It's one of the largest expenses HR has to deal with. And, and how can, why is it happening? What's going on with the legislation? What's going to change? Like, from your perspective, why are we dealing with this every single year? Well, I think the sad part is I don't 
as far as legislation goes, to answer your question, I don't know if there's a lot happening there to improve this. The biggest drivers of our healthcare increase dollars right now are is pharmacy. Pharmacy is killing us and it's just getting worse. I mean, some of the drugs we're talking about are well over a million dollars and the insurance plans are covering those. And so we're talking about new drugs coming out in the marketplace that are over a million dollars and it's gonna go up from there. You know, you can expect that the plans have to cover those, right? Then we're gonna be seeing bigger increases over the years just to take care of that. So being creative and, and uh, there are ways to help plans run better, you know? So we are seeing, you know, not every company is getting big increases every year. There are companies that are actually getting decreases and getting money back from the insurance companies. But it's being creative and being, you know, when it comes down to helping employees make better decisions is what's going to fix this. Helping companies make better decisions and really being consumers is what's going to fix this problem. Otherwise, we're still going to be faced with these huge increases every year. Okay, so you just you hit a buzzword for me, which is creative. And I want to get into those creative approaches of some of the things you're seeing. But first, uh, just to take a step back, um, as we talk about legislation and, and how there's not a lot being done, there was a lot done with the Affordable Care Act, right? And it really created this consumer-driven model. Um, I'm curious, how has Utah received that? Um, we, we see an influx of HSAs, which is the most common plan probably that's out there right now. Um, how are employees adapting to being consumer driven? And I mean, when you, when you get a heart attack, now they're going to say, which hospital do you want to go to? And you have to think in the middle of that heart attack of, well, who's got, who's going to cover me and who's going to give me the best rate. I mean, that doesn't seem in a moment of medical panic and crisis that you really want to shop out best prices and be a consumer, but we are. And so how is that being received in, in Utah? I mean, first off, I think it depends on who you are you know, as far as consumerism. That's the biggest thing that we're driving right now. You know, as Ventress as a whole, every meeting we have, every employee meeting, we're talking be a consumer. Even if you're not even on HSA, if you're on a traditional plan, right? If you're just paying co-pays, be a consumer. Mm -hmm. What they don't understand is kind of like swiping a credit card all year long, right? We're swiping, going to doctors, you know, going to get a, go to the ER, we're going to. I take my MRIs. kids some of the time, two or three times to the doctor a week because they like pass pink eye back and forth, and something else right. comes up. It's awful. But we're not, you know, we're just swiping a credit card all year long, and then come the end of the year, we get this big increase. Like, what the heck happened, right? And when, when I'm sitting in a meeting talking to employees and saying, "Do you have any idea that you can get an MRI for four hundred dollars versus two thousand or three thousand at the hospital?" Everybody's raising their thing. No, you can't. You know, I was sitting in a meeting the other day talking that this company's on a high deductible plan, and I was explaining about some of the tools that are out there. One, Telemed, right? I was just explaining what Telemed can do. And the lady, this is an older lady, and she looked at me and said, that's not possible. They can't do that. She hadn't even tried once. She never once tried to call that phone number to see what they really can do for her. She didn't want to be a consumer, mm -hmm. right? The younger generation, I think, is. We're used to going to Amazon and seeing the same product from five different places and say, well, this one's got the same amount of stars, the same product, and it's $5 less. I'm going to choose that one. Yeah. Right? But I would say 80% of people aren't doing that with their health care, which is the biggest, one of our biggest expenses in our lives. Right? So education is going to be the most important part of that. I don't know if this is answering your question there, but... What, as far as legislation and what's happening, how did it change our mindset? HSAs became probably more popular because they were less expensive. If the company did not set that up correctly, the right way, and actually try to incentivize employees or, or to, to put money into their HSAs or, or to really make that plan look good, if that makes sense, then they failed. They mm -hmm. didn't do well. But when we're sitting down with an employer saying this is the possibilities with an HSA, we had companies that had zero increases for five years that are on HSAs. They're on these high deductible plans. The employees are loving it as they start to understand how their healthcare dollars, where their healthcare dollars are going. And if they don't use it, they keep it. So let's explore the education piece. Uh, I mean, you say that you cannot have an increase for five years if people understand it and use it the right way. I think that it is a big education issue when you look at total rewards and, and how to utilize medical benefits. And, and I don't know if HR is doing good enough job at explaining that. 
Um, so how do we educate our employee base on how to effectively use medical insurance and be more consumer driven to reduce those rates so people can have a savings for longer if they are in an HSA plan? Like what does HR need to do better to help employees better understand it so we can just fast forward those five years and reduce the time so that our employees are saying, yes, this is awesome and I love this plan? Well, the biggest challenge one is right. They have to understand it. You know, so I'm doing this all day long, every day for years, right? I know what's going on the, with the laws. I know what's going on with the plans, how all the insurance companies work, how the HSAs work, what's the values, where to find the cheapest MRI, you know, just because I'm cheap too. I don't want to spend $2,000 for MRI, right? I don't want to, you know, I'm going to shop around. If I'm going to get a knee surgery, I'm going to shop around. I know how to do that because I do this every day and I help other people do this every day. But in HR, that's going to be one, if they want to improve that, they're going to have to learn or use companies like us to help them. You know, so our, all of our clients are saying, you know, when we sit in meetings, you know, we're giving them all the tools and we're saying, here's our phone number, here's our, you know, don't call the insurance company because it's like calling Chase Bank. You can press zero a thousand times just to talk <laughs> to somebody. So we're giving our clients our direct, inf- our direct information, our direct line, our email addresses, call us. If you're, if you're going in for a MRI, call us before. Let us help you make a good decision. Now, the HR can be involved as much as they want to or as little. Right. The more they're involved, though, in helping those people, those their, their employees make better decisions, the better it will be. But what we found is employees are not caring about this. When we sit in an employee meeting, they do not care. They're not listening until they have something come up, mm-hmm. until they're having a baby, until they're having a surgery come up. Then all of a sudden, they f- they didn't they thought crap. I wish I would have listened to that meeting because I have no clue how to do this. Right. And so we're, that's what we're finding. So some of the tools that we've been doing, we've actually been creating videos explaining, here's how an HSA works. If you're gonna go in for a surgery, this is how you do it. This is how your health plan works you know, for your company. And we're creating these videos so that they can watch them at a time, you know, they can watch them at a the time that it is important to them. So that may take that load off of the HR person. So if they're saying, well, I'm going in for a surgery, what do I do? Well, here's a link to this, here's a Vimeo link to this, and it's gonna explain how to do that. And so we're finding the tools, the more tools we provide, the better decisions people make but we're trying to ingrain in their heads. Don't just take your doctor's word for it. Ask around, just like you do with Amazon. Yeah. Look around. Okay, so this is is great information. Um, Trevor, I guess a question that I have for you, um, I feel like there's a surge happening of voluntary benefits and, and elective things that you can sign up for that employees pay for. I mean, you listed a handful of those already, like getting your you know beard shaved. I wish I had a beard. I can't grow a beard. But if I could, I would love to have them come in, right? Or get haircuts on site. Some of those things are really cool. Um, but are you seeing an increase in voluntary elections on things that an employer can offer that doesn't cost them anything that the employee pays for outside of what you've already described. Um, is, is that part of the total rewards philosophy? What you've kind of explained outside of like the on-site perks and on-site services, right. yeah. most of the other things seem to be employer paid. Um, this just happens to be one of the things that works out really well for the employer where it's like really high perceived value. We get like Google-like perks where we can cater to our employees' needs and we don't have to fork out like a ton of cash to do. We're yeah. just allowing these vendors to come do their thing and to the employees it seems like we're like going to bat for them and working really hard to make this happen when in reality it's a pretty plug and play type situation. That's awesome. See, I, I love the competitive edge that we have in the Silicon Slopes right now of trying to have those Google type benefits. So. Um, Let's talk about technology that's helping provide these benefits. And, and Thane, one of the things that you mentioned earlier was, was telemed. I mean, this is some really cool tech to be able to, at no copayment, call directly to a registered nurse or an actual doctor in the area that can provide you medicine. Um, you can schedule it. It's really cool technology. Um, you can either talk a little bit more about that or what are some other cool technologies that are happening right now that are providing a better holistic approach to compete against the Googles of the world that doesn't cost the employer a lot? Well, I mean, I, telemed I love, no question. I love telemed. I use it. I've got, I've got four little kids. Literally, the last two months I've used it seven or eight times. Yeah. You know, where I'm on a high deductible health plan. Right, and I'm not, it costs me nothing when I call that doctor and talk to him, get all the prescriptions I need. Love it. 
So telemed is a huge growing trend. I think you're going to see that get bigger and bigger. You're seeing slot tells and those, you know, putting it out there on billboards. It's a big deal. And it's really helpful just on that note as far as cost. That does help the health plan for those that understand how this works. A telemed visit is going to be a lot less expensive being billed. A lot, the, the bill is to the insurance is going to be a lot less with telemed. So that's going to save a lot over time with your health plan. So we're actually seeing that significant savings, you know, especially with some of our larger companies that are self-funded. We're seeing that as a huge savings to those companies. So I love telemed. There's a lot of tools out there. This is, I'd say four or five years ago, there was nothing out there. There just was nothing. You know, you go, you're going to take your doctor's word for it. You know, if the doctor says you got to go get a surgery, you got to go get an MRI, you're just going to go do it, whatever the doctor says. And still, a lot of us, it's just retraining our minds just to shop it like we shop everything else in our life, right? But the tools are out there. You have GoodRx that you can type in. I don't know if anybody's ever used GoodRx. You, can, you get a drug prescribed to you. You type that drug, and it's going to tell you the cheapest place to buy that drug, right? And if there's a coupon available for that drug, it's awesome. I, I've saved hundreds of dollars myself. With good RX. Is that an app? It's just you can get an app, yes, or you go on their website. Just go to their website. Yeah, it's awesome. So goodrx.com is a great tool. The the thing that's exciting with some of the insurance companies, not all of them, are they're all doing this maybe because they're forced to, because the market's making them. You know, it's transparency tools that we really desperately need. The biggest frustration with healthcare is this: the it's one of our most expensive things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and we have no clue how much things cost. We don't know how much a surgery is going to cost until we do the surgery and then we get the bills. So how cool would it be if we could actually shop that around like we can anything else in our lives? Yeah. And there are actual tools out there that are starting to help us to do that. Are we still where it should be? Absolutely not. There are, there are I would say, one or two insurance companies that are awesome at doing this and are helping you become a consumer and shopping the best solutions out there for you. I'm really excited about those. And so technology there, I just, when I'm sitting down with the member or employee, be a consumer and the tools are out there, just use them. And, and uh, right now I'm seeing, I'd probably say maybe 20% of people still are actually using those tools. They're definitely the younger generation, the sure. older ones are skeptical, they're used to doing certain things, and, uh, but they're out there, the tools are out there. That's cool. Okay, uh, Trevor, I would love to hear a little bit about Perk Now and, and your software and how that's helping. Now, uh, for those of you not familiar with Perk Now, um, they should be on HR's radar in Utah. And the reason is because there's a couple of really cool HR tech systems that are homegrown that I think are making a big impact. And, and I think you fit in that arena really well. Um, Motivosti is one of our key sponsors, right? And and it's this peer-to-peer -peer recognition software. It's priced a very similar model to, to the way Perk Now is. And Mark Newman, the founder of HireVue, which is one of the coolest HR platforms to come out of Utah and most successful, is one of your key investors. Um, and so kind of a cool story. Maybe just tell that story really shortly, how you got introduced to him and how HR entre entrepreneurial HR people in Utah can get the attentions of Mark Newman's and Scott Johnson's and other people of the world. So tell that story really quick and then we'll get into your product. Yeah, quick, quick backstory. So as mentioned before, Perk Now in its infancy was really far from HR tech. It was a mobile car detailing business I'd started when I, when I first moved up here for college. Um, managed to work my way into Vivint and Qualtrics as an employee perk, um, offering the services on site for employees, um, just on my hands and knees scrubbing cars. And I soon realized that was like the last thing I wanted to be doing. Yeah. Um, but it kind of organically grew throughout school, all the way up to from down in Provo, all the way up to, to Salt Lake and Overstock.com. Um, but Working with tons of HR people and seeing kind of having like an insider view at their, their problems, um, came to realize that they wanted to offer really affordable, awesome, unique, practical perks to their employees. Employees absolutely loved the concept of getting more free things on top of like salary and benefits, but there was this like big divide between the two. There was no um, easy way to give employees access to everything available and so what we often saw were some like intranet page hidden somewhere that had a list of a few local discounts or different perks available um, spreadsheets that nobody knew existed and so it was kind of this out of sight out of mind type thing 
Um, so that's when we had the idea, like, what if we built a tech platform to host, to be kind of the hub for all things employee perks. At the time, perks for us were synonymous with just employee discounts. So discounts at restaurants or hotels or theme parks, different things like that. Um, but it kind of grew into more of like a work-life integration platform. Um, we believe work-life balance is just so binary and it's such like an old buzzword um, that the new, the new way of doing things and the shift HR is going towards is integrating work and life. So the employees, it's not just I'm here at work and that's going to compete with my lifestyle away from work, but how can we bring the two together? Um, so yeah, we serendipitously met Mark Newman um, early, early on when we just barely started building a product. There was a, a UVU student startup competition, so we were practicing a pitch for that at a lecture series he was going to be speaking at, and so he caught the tail end of it, and he ran down afterwards and um, told us how much he loved HR tech and gave us some advice, and then a few months later after he left Hireview, he reached out and um, started mentoring us and then a few months later he came on as as an angel investor um, and with that we've been able to grow a ton we're work, now working with some of the top companies in Utah like doTERRA, Entrada, Exactware, 1-800-CONTACTS, UVU um, and a lot of other small startups as well because we're able to give them the same type of like perk and reward and recognition programs as some of the big dogs so it helps them compete too. It's awesome. I love this. I love that as a student, you have a great idea and you're just do you know, you're doing the best you can pitch competition, get the attention of, you know, CEO of, of higher view. And all of a sudden he's an angel investor, like super cool. We, we need HR to win. We need Utah to win. And it only happens through these type of relationships. So, um, if anybody listening to this podcast has a great idea, um, share it, promote it. Let's get that tech out there and let, let's change the way HR is perceived. So uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, some of the actual perks that you guys are offering, the adoption rate, the success, like how is your technology changing total rewards and, and what's been a response from the employee base and from the employers? Yeah, so it's a really plug and play solution. What we found with HR is they're really hesitant to implement new things because typically it takes weeks or even months to implement. And we're extremely plug and play. We can get them up and running within a day. Um, employees just have to download an app or create an account online where they can access, it's cross-platform, so they can access via desktop or from their phones. Um, the different perks available, there's, as mentioned, there's tons of recurring discounts from local local restaurants. To what are a couple of restaurants? We love um, food. So. so the biggest one, like the most popular by far is Five Star Barbecue down in Orem. Oh, okay. Like dozens and dozens of people use that deal a day. I think it's like $4 off their, their meat plate. Um, so like doTERRA, for example, has a group of employees, they call it Five Star Monday. And there's like 12 of them every Monday that <laughs> nice. go all together. And so these, really these cool rates that you, you have negotiated are permanent and fixed. It's not right. like come on Monday and get 50% off an appetizer and then on Tuesday get a free drink. It's just a constant, right. here's the discount. Yeah, we like to think of it more as like preferred pricing for the employees. It's not like a, a discount that expires, but it's something that because they work at this company and... Um, by working at this company, they're perk now members, they receive these exclusive rates. So how'd you negotiate these rates? So part of our team, like one of our co-founders, that's like his whole job, he goes out there and just as scrappy as we can be, whether it's walking in or making phone calls or finding deals online and um, those types of partnerships. Okay, so restaurants, what else do you have? So hotels, we just have landed a huge partnership with a hotel affiliate. So like 90% of the world doesn't realize like, that Hotel.com, Expedia, Priceline, like they own that industry so much that if you go to Google, like the first few pages, um, if you want to book hotels, are, are all these big players. Yeah. Um, but in reality, there are some like back-end players that can get you ridiculous rates on hotel inventory. So we're able to get between like 30 and 60% off the normal rates on Priceline. Nice. Um, and that's been like widely used by tons of our users. We get emails all the time of people that save a couple hundred bucks a night just by um, using our um, platform for that. Um, theme parks like Lagoon, when Lagoon was open this last summer and spring, or spring, fall, summer, um, 
we get like $17 off per ticket for those, like BYU or Utah tickets as well for ball games, jazz tickets. Um, there's like escape rooms or the axe throwing, just like a few examples like that. I see you have Spike Ball right here on your laptop. So oh, we yeah. have a partnership with Spike Ball where it's no way. 25% off sets. Heck yes. So. That's awesome. Uh, this podcast is sponsored by Spike Ball. Please send us free equipment. <laughs> <laughs> well, the no, good news actually, is on that, I would tell you, we, we, we meet with HR people all the time, right, business mm-hmm. owners. And this time, I mean, right now in our market, right, with the job market so good, is we're getting asked all the time, what else can we offer? <laughs> and a lot of times they can't afford it, but what else can we do? We're hearing this all the time. This more than ever. You know, I say six, seven years ago was the opposite. People are dropping benefit, you know, back when the market was down. People are dropping things, you know, what we can't afford this anymore. But now they're they are looking for voluntary ways to do that. And that's a it's that's a perfect timing for this market. It's such a competitive market. advantage, and that's what we're seeing, especially within tech companies in Utah, from recruiting and retention purpose. Uh, hey, we're the only company that will give you twenty five percent off your spike ball equipment, right? And we have sixty percent discounts on hotels next time you go to Disneyland. I mean, those type of things make a big difference, and and that's why when we look at this holistic total rewards package, we've got to look at perks. We've got to look at medical. We've got to look at wage and benefits and equity. And this whole, all this comes together to create a, a culture where employees say, I'm valued and I actually want to stay. And HR needs to do a better job of selling all of these things in one big lump sum, right? That's why when you outline a total compensation package, you should factor in everything you're paying for your employees to show the value of that employee on a dollar uh, standpoint to them from the employer perspective. At least that's my opinion. Yeah. So this is really cool stuff that you guys are doing. Um, I, I'd like to just uh, know, Thane, are there any other really forward-thinking or creative things that are happening in the world of benefits? I mean, that's where the big dollar spend is. Are, are there any interesting plan providers or any unique things that are forthcoming or that you've seen over the last couple of years other than the education piece and consumerism and the things we've already talked about? Absolutely. There's there's one that comes to my mind that's been huge. The last uh, really couple of years, they came out about three years. It's a company called HSA Health Plans. I know you and I have talked about this in the past, but HSA Health Plans is an insurance company. You know, don't get that confused with HSA Health. You know, an HSA account, health savings account. This is an actual insurance company named HSA Health Plans. And what I love what they're doing is they really are truly becoming. A, they're helping people become a consumer. And they, just to give you an example, on the back of their insurance cards, they even say, if you expect a bill or a claim or anything over $600, call us first. And they're gonna, their customer service level, it's all about customer service, their whole focus is to help you become a consumer. Why? Well, it helps them as well. So they're gonna say, if you're gonna go in for a knee surgery, and this is an example, an actual example they've used, they talk about knee replacement. The knee replacement can vary in cost. The one example they shared was like $40,000 with one hospital to up to $20,000 with another. We're talking almost half the cost. Now this insurance company is gonna help you make those decisions. They're gonna say, here's the cost here and here, and if you go here and you are willing to pay your portion right up front, they're gonna give you a huge rate discount, huge. And in a lot of times, they're going to work with you to where there's, you know, they're, the actual insurance company is going to put money into your HSA to help pay for those. Now, people will say, well, what, what if I don't want to go to that provider? They're not going to make you. But they're going to say, if you go here, we're going to help you with this. Why would they help you? And, and well, it's a win win for everyone, okay? Uh, the, the way that they do this, how they negotiate with these hospitals, their preferred providers, they're going to say, we're going to pay you cash the day of. The insurance company, as well as me, the person going in for that surgery. So we, we both agreed to pay cash the day up. They, this is an interesting thing I learned the other day from them, is that about 20% of all of our costs, all of our bills, is billing. 20% of everything we're paying for in medical is just a problem with billing. I think we've all dealt with that. We all get mailed out the explanation of benefits. We all spend our time paying it, right? And they're going back and forth, going to collections, this and that, right? 20% of all of our costs is just billing alone. And so one of the ways that they do is that if you're willing to do, they call it prompt pay, which is really cool. Say if you're just willing to do your portion, they're going to 20% just like that. They're going to say, they're going to, that 20% they saved and all this billing costs, they're going to hand that to you if you do their prompt pay. Okay. But then there also, somebody's going to say, well, what if I, that provider sucks? 
right? What if I go get this knee surgery and it's not that good because I pay 20000 instead of forty? Well, it does them no good to put you in a provider that they're going to have to pay for that twice, right? Right. So when I'm talking about a win-win, it's win for me. They're going to help me pay significantly less, significantly less for that surgery. It's a win for the hospital. They get paid day up. And it's a win for the insurance company because they just pay 20000 instead of 40000 for the same surgery, right? Now, this fixes healthcare. If every insurance company, if you ask me personally, if every insurance company did what they're doing, healthcare would be fixed in a matter of time, quickly. Because all of a sudden, those hospitals, doctors that are charging 40000 for the same surgery that they could do for 20000 all of a sudden, who's going to stop going there? And what happens? Those guys are going to have to come down with their rates, right? And so I look at that as, as, as a solution. Let me just tell you why I believe, I, it's not just I believe it's going to work, it's working. You know, when we were handing out, you know, they're only three years old. I have not handed out an increase yet with any of my clients that are with this company. In fact, we're handing out decreases and they actually share the profits back with you with the way that their plans work. So I'm actually handing out not just decreases, I'm actually taking huge checks to my clients that are with them because they're getting the money back because they're running well. They only offer HSAs, so that already is a big advantage that they have over companies that offer copay plans and HSAs because they're going out, they're, they're getting the good risk because people are being consumers. And so the guy that started Health Equity, which is a Utah company, then one of the, the, the founders of that decided several years ago, I could fix healthcare. So he left Health Equity, he's one of the founders, left Health Equity and started this insurance company. And it's working. It's and amazing. we're seeing the first year or two, obviously slower, people a little nervous. It's always a new insurance company, people, companies get a little nervous to go that route. The tier, years two, three, it's been a cons- completely different. People are excited about some of these stories they're hearing. There's nothing more exciting when we have an employee meeting in this, you know, with the company that's with, you know, with the client that's with uh, the HSA Health Plans. When we ask them in that employee meeting after they've been there with the year, who's had a, give us an example of who's used prompt pay or who's, they've actually shared the savings and we get it, two or three people, four people raising their hand. All the other employees are like, are you serious? They really did that for you? This is an actual insurance company that did that for you? Yes, they did that. They're real stories, and now we're seeing people just get excited. People are using the tools, and uh, that's not to sell. I don't. I mean, I'm not. A yeah, you sell person, anybody. Right? Yeah, but that that's a cool story that we've been waiting for in this industry for ever. Yeah, and it's working. And hopefully, and so we'll have more pop up excited. like that. Oh, yes. exactly. I tell when I have like another insurance company say, "How do we do on this? How do we look? How do we you know compare? Or why is this company moving to them?" I say, "Well." This is why yeah. the company, the client. I've had two or three clients this year say, "I've never been more excited for healthcare." It's been years since I felt this excitement about this, and when I tell you know the other bigger insurance companies about what they're doing and why, I said, "You guys really need to look at this. These are things you should be doing, have to do. Otherwise, this is not sustainable. This 20, 30 percent increases is not sustainable. Companies cannot afford to do that anymore." Totally. Okay. Um, final question I want to ask you guys. Um, one of the things we love and disrupt Salt Lake City is figuring out how to remove administrative HR and automate processes. So Trevor, how does Perk now eliminate, um, I, you talked about all the cool benefits you offer, how does that reduce workload from HR and automate it so that you don't have to hire another person to right. manage Perks? We often like to think of ourselves as the sixth man when it comes to Perks and rewards. Um, because there's a lot of automation involved. Um, a, lot of com- a lot of companies out there that are trying to go out and get perks on their own, they literally have somebody on the HR team making phone calls to local restaurants, um, trying to get their own kind of perks built out. Or if they're a big enough company, usually 400, 500 employee plus, they have vendors constantly bombarding them, reaching out, trying to offer a deal and the HR teams don't know what to do to get that in front of employees, right? Um, So we're able to take the load off there. We manage all the vendor relationships, so that way they don't have to constantly make sure is this this perk still available um, and do all the coordination there. Um, So that's kind of on the discount side, right? On the on-site side, more and more on-site companies um, are popping up and doing things. So what you start seeing is when somebody in HR has to manage more than just two or three on-site services, it gets really manual as far as getting, sending out s- scheduling links for employees, figuring out what day they're going to come for each vendor, um, making sure the employees 
know where to park their car or where Jet Dental has to set up. There's just a lot of um, administrative burden involved there, a lot of moving parts. So we're actually able to do all of that through the platform. Um, so we host on-site services in the platform so employees, it's super visible to employees. They can schedule straight from there. They have all the details on what they need to do. So it, it takes HR completely out of the picture there. There's push notifications or SMS reminders as well um, involved with that. And then a piece we haven't talked about is our employee like recognition reward piece, which is one of, it's our most new product. Um, it's basically a gift card automation tool. And so what we saw is tons of our clients were having somebody run to the store, buy gift cards in bulk, bring them back, and then they have to figure out how to distribute them, how to keep track of them for tax and compliance. Um, and so there was all kinds of, of moving parts there as well. Um, so we have a dashboard where in, where HR teams can actually send um, gift cards digitally in cool. seconds. It keeps a digital footprint print of everything for all the reporting purposes. And they can actually add managers throughout the whole organization, allocate budgets to them so everybody's sending and it's not just housed by, by one department. Um, what you've seen from some of our clients is they'll have 15 people one, one client specifically had 15 people involved with the gift carding process for the company. Oh, crazy. How much time and energy is being spent there trying to manage that whole process, right? Um, and so we're in the process of implementing it with them right now, and it's, it's quite the overhaul, but it's going to be able to automate and save just tons of hours and then also improve the employee experience because they receive things instantly, and they actually have a whole catalog of gift cards to choose from rather than what's kind of left um, in stock. So it's awesome. Yeah. A lot that, of automation. That's really, really cool. Um, Thane, similar question with one, one tweak. People listening right now that, uh, need to select a benefit broker. What should they look for in selecting the right agency to partner with the right individual to have their best interests in mind? and someone to think a little bit creatively and gets outside the box. Obviously, you've done a great job at showing how you and Ventress have done that, but what advice would you offer to a C-suite member who doesn't have HR or HR who's just dabbling in benefits and doesn't know who to partner with? Um, how do they select the right broker? And when they do select the right person, like what are you guys doing to automate a lot of those things so HR doesn't have to be so hands-on? Well, first off, you just choose Ventress. Right? <laughs> well, of course, right. yes. But uh, a couple of things, you know, when we're looking at, at consultants or brokers, you know, one is transparency. You know, how transparent are there? Are a lot of conflicts of interest in this business, as you can imagine. You know, sometimes it depends on how the broker is getting paid. That's the first question I'd always ask. How are you getting paid? Obviously, we want to feed our families. There's also a right and wrong way to do that. You know, some of the commissions that you can find that are out there that we see are crazy. They should not be happening. Yeah. So if you get a 20% increase in your renewal, then that means that that consultant also is getting a 20% increase in pay. In a lot of ways. In some In a lot of ways. In a lot of times we are getting paid a percentage of premium. So you're right. If I'm getting, if you're getting 20% increase in your rates, I did, you're right. I just got 20% increase in my pay if I'm paid that way. So we try to eliminate that. And we're, or the first thing you're ever going to, when you're talking to Ventress anyways, is say, here, this is how we get paid. We want you to understand how that is. So so when you're shopping, broker, benefit, consultants, make sure you know how they get paid. Okay. Don't do reason. a percentage, do a price per head. If you can, there are some, there are some, some size of companies that, you, you don't have, that even we don't have a control over. You know, but if you're over 50 employees, no matter what, the broker has control over that. If any insurance company that you're with. And so make sure and ask that question. Okay. We're forthright on that one. You know, we want to make sure people exact, understand exactly how we get paid. What other things and should people look at? So uh, commission one, just technology is available, right? If you're just, uh, if you want, if you're still doing paper out there, then you're about 10 years behind, okay? <laughs> so one of the things I was kind of joking around before we started this podcast is, you know, seven, eight years ago, I just sold insurance. That's actually the smallest piece of what I do now. We talk about insurance, talk about benefits, some of these things quickly, then it's almost like, well, what technology are we using to put this all together? Payroll, benefits, you know, everything. And so 
what uh, that's what companies are wanting. They want the one all one the all in one system, right? You're you know, really becoming be, more of an HR consultant now, oh, looking at, at the HRIS and how it ties in with the Ben Admin, how that ties in with the, uh, payroll, payroll, and how that ties yeah. in with I, everything I you're trying to sell. I don't sell payroll. I talk about payroll in every single meeting I'm in. Yeah. Okay. And so, same thing. Even talk about Perk now, putting all these things together. Everybody wants one system. Now I tell you that the perfect technology is not out there yet. I'm going to be the first one to admit that. But there are two pieces that are coming together right now. In the next few years, we are going to see that perfect system. I think it's just not quite there yet. But there are ways to make that really. So the whole idea that you're saying administratively to try to take that off the load of the HR, we're building that. So you know, in our what we're trying to do is another question you'd ask them was how are how are if you're talking to a consultant, how do you guys help me with this? And so we actually have a whole team in our office. A whole implementation team that's going to help you. If you want to integrate payroll with your with your Ben Admin system, with your whole HRS, we're going to help you do that. Even if we're not involved with the payroll at all, we're going to help put those pieces together. And so there's free versions, and then there's paid versions. You know, there are some systems you could do that you can do all this. It's going to cost you a lot of money. And so just understanding that, depending on what your budget is, we're going to help you find those right solutions. Okay, so writing benefit guides mm -hmm. and outlining what those plans are, doing open enrollment meetings, those are all things that a broker can do, right? Oh, yeah. If your HR team is doing that, get a different broker. 100%. Um, okay, great. What about, uh, we hit on this a little bit earlier with the HSA company. Uh, if you have a billing inquiry, should you be able to call your broker and have them negotiate a better price for you or, or price it out? Or are so, there tools that do that at this point? So what I see, it depends, you know, when I meet with a new client, I kind of ask them some of the same questions. And what a lot of times I see is the, the broker consult a lot of times say, well, call the insurance company. You know, what we try to do is call us. Like I was saying a few minutes ago, we don't want you to press zero a thousand times to try and talk to United Healthcare. That's a large, one of the largest companies in the country, right? So, so we're saying call our office. We have a lot of business with all these insurance companies. And so we can help you through those. A lot of times we don't even have to have call insurance because we can do it in our office. And so look for somebody that actually has a team behind the scenes to help you with any of those kind of problems you have. The worst thing for a HR person is having somebody come, you know, employees every day come to them and say, well, now I need help getting this or that. I'm going in for a baby. How do I do this? What we try and do is even give a stack of our account manager cards. You know, so when someone, when one of your employees come to you, you know, at your, your desk, say, here, call Lynette, call whoever mm -hmm. right and so you have that one-on-one -on -one, you know we look at ourselves Ventress as an extension of the HR we're yeah. part of your HR team and so once again when you ask those questions about you know who's the right person right company to represent us are they a part of your team or are they just selling you insurance awesome cool thank you guys so very much for joining us today as we as we talk about total rewards in, in HR um, really we're just scratching the surface as it relates to benefits and as it relates to perks um, you still have compensation plan designs and you still have equity and you still have bonus structures and so many other things that factor into the total rewards but these are critical elements um, and they vary in in price they vary in uh, how they make you different from other companies and, and I think that it's really cool to have you guys together so thank you for, for coming and, and sharing all this with us and, and we really appreciate your time and, and keep disrupting the HR market here in Utah thanks Jared appreciate yeah, it thanks for having us